How do you begin the one-time information collection? Each authorization holder must complete and submit the form online at the one-time information collection online filing system. The link to the one-time information collection online filing system is located on the webpage of the FCC's Office of International Affairs. The link is also available in the public notice that was released by the FCC's Office of International Affairs announcing the deadline of the one-time information collection. Click on the link to start the one-time information collection. This tutorial features an example of a filing by an authorization holder claiming an exemption in Question 6. An example of a one-time information collection filing with Question 6 exemption. For purposes of this tutorial, the second person, you, will refer to International Section 214 authorization holders. Click on the link to the one-time information collection filing system on the webpage of the FCC's Office of International Affairs. Each authorization holder must log into the online filing system with its username and password for the FCC user registration system. Read the language on this page. Click the Continue Radio button. Now click the arrow. Read this important technical notices page. After reading this page, click the Continue Radio button. Then click the arrow. Now read the language on this page. After reading this page, then click the Continue Radio button and click the arrow. Remember, do not use the Browser Back button. Because an officer of the authorization holder must certify to the truth and accuracy of its responses at the end of the form, we encourage the authorization holder to carefully review its answer to each question before moving to the next question. If an authorization holder needs to correct an error on any question before it certifies and submits its responses to the one-time information collection, refer to the steps in the instructions and the retake tutorial. Here's question one. Question one requires you to enter in the text box the 10-digit FCC registration number of the authorization holder. Include all leading zeros when entering the FRN, and click the arrow. Now review the information populated in question 1A. If the entity name or entity type or registrant name or registrant type is incorrect or blank, the authorization holder must log into CORS and update the information before continuing the one-time information collection. If the information is correct, Click the arrow. Now we're at question two. It is critical to read and adhere to these instructions for question two. Enter all the current International Section 214 authorization file numbers associated with the FRN you entered in question one. If an authorization holder has more than one FRN associated with current International Section 214 authorization file numbers, the authorization holder will need to identify each FRN and all of the associated current authorization file numbers in separate responses to this one-time information collection. Here, enter the current International Section 214 authorization file numbers associated with the FRN that you entered in question one. Click on the arrow. If you have more than 49 current authorization file numbers associated with the FRN that you entered in question one, you must identify all of the remaining authorization file numbers in a text box provided in question 2B. Question 2A will ask whether the authorization holder has any additional authorization file numbers associated with this FRN. If the answer is yes, click on the arrow. In question 2B, enter all the remaining authorization file numbers associated with this FRN. 
Read the directions for entering the additional authorization file numbers and enter all of the remaining authorization file numbers in the text box in accordance with the directions. Now click on the arrow. For questions 3, 3A, and 3B, enter the contact information in the applicable fields and click the arrow at the end of each page. Now answer yes or no to question 4 to indicate whether or not the authorization holder's International Section 214 authorizations is subject to a mitigation agreement. Then click on the arrow. If you answer no to question 4 and click the arrow, you will advance directly to question 6. If you answer yes to question 4, as we do here, you now move to question 5. Enter all the ICFS file numbers that contain a copy of the mitigation agreement. There are two ICFS file numbers for this tutorial. An authorization holder may enter up to a maximum of 15 file numbers in this question. What if an authorization holder has more than 15 file numbers subject to a mitigation agreement? If the authorization holder enters 15 file numbers and clicks the arrow, then question 5A will ask whether the authorization holder has additional file numbers that are subject to the mitigation agreement. If you answer yes to 5A and click the arrow, then enter all of the remaining file numbers that are subject to the mitigation agreement in question 5B. Question 5B will provide a text box and instructions for entering the file numbers. After entering the file numbers in the text box, click on the arrow and you will then advance to question 6. Question 6 asks whether the authorization holder qualifies for the exemption from completing questions 9 through 14 of the one-time information collection even if the authorization holder has reportable foreign ownership. Question 6 provides the qualifications for exemption. Please note that you will have an opportunity at question 9 to indicate you do not have any reportable foreign ownership if applicable. In this example, we will click yes and click the arrow button. Here's question 7. You must now enter in the box the file number of the application that fulfills all of the requirements for the exemption. If more than one application fulfills the requirements, provide the most recent file number. Then click the arrow. The collection advances now to question 8. Read the instructions in question 8 before answering this question. For question 8, aggregate and identify all of the citizenships or places of organization for every foreign individual and or entity, including a government organization, that directly and or indirectly holds 10% or greater equity and or voting interest or a controlling interest in the authorization holder. After selecting the applicable radio buttons, click the arrow button at the bottom of the list. Now you will advance to question 15. Question 15 requires that an officer of the authorization holder must certify to the truth and accuracy of all information provided in response to the one-time information collection. Remember, the filer cannot go back and review earlier responses after moving to the next question. If an authorization holder needs to correct an error on any question before it certifies and submits its responses to the one-time information collection, refer to the steps in the instructions and the retake tutorial. Upon clicking the radio button following the words, I certify, and clicking on the arrow, question 16 will be displayed. Finally, question 16. In question 16, type the certifying official's full name in the box. For purposes of this filing, the entry of the official's name shall constitute that official's electronic signature to this certification. 
The signature certifies that he or she has examined the filing and that to the best of his or her knowledge, information, and belief, all statements of fact contained in the filing are true and correct. Persons making willful false statements can be punished by fine or imprisonment under the Communications Act. Title 47, United States Code, Section 220, Paragraph E. This tutorial is concluded. Thank you.